Hi, everyone. For you, Cody, respect. That was well handled. So my name is Alvaro Saburido. I'm a front-end tech lead at Porsche Digital, and also I'm a story blog ambassador. I often write in Dev2, and here are some of my um, links if you want to check more. Also, I create a lot of content in Alvaro Dev Labs. It's my YouTube channel. And here is my Twitter handle, just in case you want to say hi. So while we are here today, um, I hopefully will be able to inspire you to add uh, something like this to your page. This is a cat, of course, and it's a 3D model that uses the proper swag for uh, Nux, and this is living inside of a Nux application. But I, I have to warn you, though, if we want to go deep into 3D in general, we could cover a lot of workshops, a lot of talks, uh, if we want to go to every little detail. So I have roughly like 10 minutes to convince you to try 3D in your web applications. So what I'm going to present you today is an MVP, a minimum valuable presentation. And with that, luckily, I will inspire you to use it. I have always loved video games since I was a little kid. And to be fair, that kid never grew up. Uh, I still love to play video games, especially if it's with my cat, Gerald. So yeah, Philip, we have a, uh, the two of us have a cat called Gerald, and I'm not Polish, so it's funny enough. And uh, I was like lucky enough to grow up in the golden era of all these 3D games from uh, Crash Bandicoot to Legend of Zelda and all those low poly uh, models that for, in that time seems to me like really high definition. At a certain point, I wanted to create my own stories, creating my own characters and so on. So I, I said to myself, I want to be a game developer. But you know how it's life. Sometimes uh, it redirects you to a different path. So I ended up um, studying telecommunications engineering. And I'm lucky to say that I love my job as a front-end developer. Uh, I cannot complain, right? So at a certain point, I abandoned the idea of learning 3D because honestly, I thought it was for really gifted people, like geniuses, calculating all those formulas for the 3D space and, you know, complex stuff. Like, okay, I'm going to maintain myself in my comfort zone uh, as a front-end developer and that's it. I was completely wrong. Uh, you don't need to be a genius to do 3D or learn 3D. You just need to be curious. And funny enough, I was writing this with the slide dev and my GitHub copilot uh, how to complete this phrase. So I decided to keep it here. Early this year, I came across with Bruno Simon's uh, three years uh, journey course. And I was fascinated in the webpage because he basically um, show every one of the topics of the course in a different floor full of rooms with 3D object and, and interactivity and animation as well. Like, I need to, I need to learn this. Uh, uh, how can I do it? So I sign up, and in less than one year later, I can say that I know how to implement 3D on the web. And more important for me, I am able to transmit all my characters that I'm building or modeling in 3D software into my web applications, which is awesome. So I want to give you that. I want to transmit that to you. So how we can achieve our goal? We're going to need three things. The first one is Nux. The second one is 3GS. And the third, but not less, the most important, you. Let's go with the first one. I, I will not need to explain Nux because we all here for Nux, right? Um, I, all I can say is for me, Nux is all about developer experience. It makes enjoyable to work with web. Then we have 3GS, which is a JavaScript library that does all the heavy lifting for rendering stuff on uh, the web, okay, on the browser using WebGL. So it's, again, all about developer experience. Uh, you can see here, well, the image is a little um, small, but uh, a real case, like a real usage of 3GS on the web. And the company Wigo has like a pinball game made by this in their web page and you can play with it. 
So how we can do these kind of things for our clients? First, we will need something to draw. And here's where we are going to use the instances that come in the 2GS. So we are going to create a sphere. We are going to use the mesh constructor and we're going to pass first the geometry. OK, the sphere is going to be the shape of it. And then we're going to pass the material of how it looks. So we're going to pass a basic material with a, a specific code. Then we need a camera to be able to see it. So we can use a perspective camera here. 3ES has two types of camera, perspective and orthographic. But we're going to use perspective because it's the most similar to the human eye. Something important that happens a lot when you are starting is that you need to set a position to your uh, camera. Because unless you do that, you're going to be centered in the same origin as your object. And for performance reasons, the object inside is black, is not rendered. So you're going to see a, a black page and you are not going to understand why it's happening. So make sure you are positioning your camera away from your object when you're going to do your scene. Talking about scenes, we need one to add all the objects that we're going to use. So 3D as a scene, and we can use the method add to add those objects, right? This is where view comes into play. So we can put all this fancy JavaScript into the script tag, and then we can create a canvas element in the template. All we need to do is initialize using the WebGL renderer and passing the canvas, and then some setting up some properties like the size and the pixel radio, and then call render. And ta-da, it's not going to work. Why? Because we failed on passing the reference for that Canvas element. So we're using view. How could we uh, pass the reference for an HTML element? We can use template ref and take advantage of the lifecycle hooks. Here is the code that is going to work. So we can set an experience as a reference from the HTML element and we can pass it with the attribute ref on the template tag. When it's mounted, we can initialize the WebGL renderer by passing this experience.value as the canvas. And with that, we have our sphere. But if you look closely, this doesn't have any interaction whatsoever. It looks still, it looks like an image. And it's just like that because we only render in once. This is where the concept of the loop comes into play. Similar or gap development. Um, and probably you are familiar with the uh, FPS or frames per second. It's just the amount of images you can put in one second to make any animation fluid. So uh, 3GS operates on 60 frames per second, and we can use the request animation frame function to iterate that loop and be able to modify or a scene or an object and create an animation. So we are going to update the position in the x-axis for our sphere, and we are going to render again. This is going to go with the browser refresh rate. And voila, we have a sphere that is moving. Awesome. Let's talk about reactivity, because one of the reasons that we love you is because it's amazingly reactive, right? But we need to be mindful about what things do we uh, add reactivity to, especially if there are 3GS instances. As you might know, Vue.js reactivity is based on proxies. Here I have a benchmark on how many operations can you do in one second uh, for plain objects versus proxies. And you can see the difference is way bigger. So what is going to happen if we put reactivity in your instances and then try to uh, update the sphere? It's going to do it every uh, refresh rate, and it's going to blow the performance. So be mindful about it. Of course, we're in a Nux conference, so let's see how Nux can make our life easier with 3D. The 3D world is not optimal for server side rendering or uh, SSG or all these fancy uh, acronyms. It might work, but the performance can get fun. Okay, so here's where Nux can help us um, because you cannot, as a wrapper, the client only component, 
uh, for our, our exp 3D experience, and then it will only be rendered on the client. Or even better, we can add a dot client suffix to the component name, like this. And as easy as that, we can add 3D to your Nux app in a few minutes. But that's not all. Of course, there are next steps if you want to continue this journey. You can play and try to add lights into your scene. We were using the basic material that doesn't uh, react to light, but you can uh, start playing around with several materials that are reactive to the lights. You can use textures. You can load images uh, like uh, wood and create a sphere that is uh, wood and add the images there with the texture loader. You can add orbit controls. Like in this case, I can move around, zoom in, zoom out, or not stick at and play with it. We can also add a model like this using the GLTF loader. We can animate with GSAP. And what is more important is that you play and have fun. And if you ever done anything uh, 3D or you want to do it from now on, please share your creations with me. I will be more than glad to share them in the social media. I will let you some resources to continue on your journey. So uh, the demo for the Nox cat that I presented you today is in the stack lists. And also I have the repo here if you want to play with it. I have in my YouTube channel a playlist for 3GS playing, okay, if you want to learn about it. I also have a video on how to apply 3D and view. And probably next week, I'm going to create a video version of this talk with a more extended explanation of everything. So if you want to check out. But last but not least, I totally recommend you the 3GS course by Bruno Simon because you are going to learn a lot. And Thank you very much. Yay, thank you. And excellent job. This is definitely a lot to learn. And I'm like, I had no idea that there could be so much creativity. Like in theory, I did. So I loved the presentation. Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any performance gotchas that are important to watch out for when using 3JS or Next? Um, yes, the, as I mentioned, the reactivity is important. So try to update all the instances uh, without reactivity. Okay. And you can use also shallow ref and unwrap uh, to manage this kind of stuff, especially if you're using composables, because uh, the next step actually will be to extract that logic from the experience and maybe put it on composables. I normally do that. I put them in the render, all the logic for the render, I have it in another composable and stuff. So that's important to, to, to consider. Um, if you're using 3GS plane like this, it's going to be easy. Um, it depends how much you, comp you want to complicate. If you want to create components and so on, maybe it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Thank you. Uh, next, do you have any cool animation you haven't already mentioned that you'd like to share? Oh, um, yeah, I have some, but I haven't them prepared to actually share the screen right now. Um, but what I can do is I will uh, put it on my uh, Twitter account. Um, I'm going to share it with you there. Please tag me, too, because I want to make sure that I see it. That is so cool. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, second to last one, can someone use 3JS on Vanilla View application as well as Next? Okay, it's funny the, the use of Manilla um, because 3GS is the Vanilla JavaScript or TypeScript if you want to use it. I understand that it's for Vue only, not with Nux. Yes, um, basically works the same in Vue, okay? You can use Nux for the client only and all those fancy stuff to actually uh, um, like get better performance, okay? But everything that I explained today is applicable to Vue directly. Um, you can also watch it in, in, in the uh, video that I posted about Vue. I can post it on the Twitter after this. Uh, here, there, I explain how you can do it in, in more detail. Wonderful. Thank you. And uh, before the very last question, as y'all have probably already seen, is if you look there, there, yeah, there we go. Um, go follow on Twitter. 
All right, Alvaro. Yeah. What, okay, yeah. <laughs> what is your very, uh, what is something that you're grateful for as your very last question? Uh, I'm grateful for a lot of things, um, especially my friends, uh, my couple, um, my family, all the support. Um, I came from, from Venezuela and all my family is here in Barcelona and the world, like it's all over the world. So I'm really happy that I can go to any place in the world and have a sofa and uh, share with my friends and have a good time. So I'm really lucky about that. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you again for being uh, coming and talking to us and looking forward to seeing the, the tweets later to see all the creative things that you didn't share. So thank mm -hmm. you.